Good morning again. Uh, welcome back to what I think is going to end up being a, um, a series of, uh, I don't know if you want to call it lectures, but uh, a series of talks is probably the best way to describe it. Um, that I think I have a basic outline for at this point. Um, and so uh, while I still am not sure about uh, the format necessarily and where these are going to be posted. It looks like these are going to be long form dialogues um, that get posted up to uh, to YouTube. So some of those clips I think I'll go on to TikTok which will in turn um, have links to longer clips that, that people can watch on YouTube. Um, so audience. Um, you can see from the, the Nepalese um, artistry and, and tapestries I have in the background. Uh, I have an Eastern philosophical bent. I was trained in Vedanta and Yoga at the Ramakrishna Center in New York. Was initiated by one of the monks there and studied Vedanta and, and Buddhism and other forms of Eastern philosophy for many years and also Western philosophy. I've also written quite a bit on both topics. Uh, I've published uh, six books now. Five and six are at the publisher right now. And um, I've been probably writing uh, for the last 10 years and then studying way back into my undergraduate degree where I got a degree in ancient studies from Brown University um, back in the early 90s. So I have a long history um, with uh, the material, with ancient philosophy and ancient myth and ancient theology, and, and you, you might say. Um, so certainly if you have an affinity for Ramakrishna or Vivekananda or their teachings and Vedanta, how that's been translated into the West as it relates to yoga, um, I would stick around. If you uh, have uh, an affinity for tennis or squash or the racket or mental games at all like that, um, I have a deep background in both of those games and I'll be going in and out a little bit of uh, some of the topics as it relates to, you know, some of the analogies I'll use for uh, uh, for yoga and some of the other things that we'll talk about. And uh, lastly, I, I think the, the other angle that, that, that I'll be looking at um, as we kind of go through some of this material is I have a background in systems engineering and computer science, particularly networking and distributing computing. I have a master's degree there uh, from New York University uh, 1998. Uh, and I've been in software and systems ever since by trade. So I run, manage, build large scale enterprise, highly available, secure production infrastructures that process millions and millions of records of uh, secure data. Uh, that's what I do. That's what I've been doing. So I have a, a significant background in systems and tech, which as it turns out, uh, is, um, I think, uh, fundamental and a really important uh, aspect to understand what's really going on here. And by what's really going on here, I mean the physical world, the world that we live in, the world that we um, um, uh, are alive in, and is present to our conscious minds, right? So reality is what most people call this world, physical reality. But as psychologists and other people have understood now for really since the dawn of man, right, this, the physical reality is not everything. Um, there's, you know, as, as Freud and Jung have broken it apart into the conscious and the unconscious mind, and Jung has talked a lot about archetypes and themes and uh, myths and sort of this realm of the unconscious that sort of feeds into the conscious, conscious world. Um, uh, there's certainly a lot to be said about that, about how relevant and important the unconscious is towards, you know, the conscious world, the world that we see uh, and feel and touch and taste. Um, and this goes back really to the very beginnings of, you know, human civilization as we know it here uh, in this in this world. Um, written records, you know, start hitting us at, you know, 4000 BCE, give or take from ancient Sumer. Uh, you've got the, the Vedas, you've got the stuff that comes from out of Iran, uh, the Avestas, um, and then you certainly have some of the ancient, you know, Book of the Dead uh, inscriptions that uh, we find in um, the temples in ancient Egypt. Um, 
and you know that's where a lot of my focus and research has been necessarily um, and a lot of my writing so I have a blog where most of most of my books and most of the material has been published not all of it but it's called snowconenewyorkcity.com snowconenewyorkcity.com I I'd suggest that if you're interested in this material and you have a little bit more of an academic bent I suggest you go and spend some time there we're just in the process of redoing that right now making that a little bit more user-friendly and a little bit more appealing um, uh, working with a great graphic artist there too actually uh, guy I've worked with for a long time and um, and that's sort of the introduction I'm here in, in southern Florida this is my office here I work out of here since the pandemic uh, moved down here I have a small boy three years old he just started school um, live here with his mom my wife uh, and uh, I have two kids from a previous marriage, one of which just started as a freshman in college and the other's wrapping up her senior year. So uh, I know how to parent, or at least know enough to be dangerous from a parenting perspective. And I'm very rooted in the world in a very sort of practical sense, in the sense of um, what it means to be a responsible parent um, and this idea of Dharma which is actually central to some of the Eastern teachings particularly uh, Vedanta and, and, and Buddhism which we'll, which we'll get into at some point I would imagine um, so uh, so that's the intro I think generally speaking what we're gonna go through um, to sort of supplement and augment some of my writing is I'm gonna kind of walk you through um, the writing and the research and some of the um, truths that uh, ultimately uh, are revealed to me through my writing that I can in turn reveal to you. So there's sort of a symbiotic relationship there. And, uh, uh, and that will start with my first work, Theology Reconsidered, which is divided into two parts, um, uh, a look into um, uh, ancient mythology and theology, the origins of our notion of God, where they came from um, in the Eurasian uh, uh, area in particular, which is Northern Africa, the Mediterranean, um, uh, Asia Minor, India proper, and then the Far East, China. Primarily, those are the areas that we look at there. Uh, and then that dovetails into um, a uh, introspective on the advent of science and knowledge as we understand it today as it's come forward in western civilization in particular rooted in the ancient greeks and then through the romans and then through um, certainly the judeo-christian lens and, and islam as well and then that comes forward to um, the proposition of a, of a alternative model of, of viewing not only just history um, and how to sort of understand a people and mankind and civilization as it's evolved, uh, but also an a alternative uh, uh, model of, uh, of metaphysics, which I call the metaphysics of awareness, which uh, um, borrows heavily from Vedanta and some of the other systems. It's a bit of a synergy, uh, synergistic type system, uh, but uh, it's an altogether uh, new model that is rooted in, you know, our understanding of modern psychology, our understanding of uh, mythos and theos as it sort of developed and evolved in, in, in throughout history, as we understand it, as we've seen it, and then um, uh, also rooted in, in, you know, the fundamental mystical kind of nature of reality, the sort of oneness of consciousness, if you will, which is uh, certainly as, as believed by the Eastern philosophical traditions, it, it can be directly experienced in this human form and as such must feed into any system of metaphysics that holds really any water that can explain you know, phenomena. Models are, are designed so that you can understand phenomenon and how things work so you understand it better so that ultimately it has um, more practical value in terms of helping you understand who you are, what your relationship should be to family and friends, how to optimize and tune that, what your relationship to work is, what your relationship is to the spirit world and, and all sorts of things like that. And that's really the intent. Those are the topics. Uh, I should point out that uh, I'm not trying to sell anything here. Um, honestly, I, I make a decent living uh, through my systems career. Uh, I've written some books, but I haven't made a dime. I spent a lot of time on them, actually. Um, but there's information there and there's insight there and there's perspective there that I just haven't quite seen. There's an academic bent 
There's a scientific bent to the work that I've done, but there's also a mystical bent to the work that I've done. And when you kind of bring all those things together, you get, you know, I think a fresh perspective on what's really going on here and how best you can kind of um, remain rooted in the spirit world and understanding your relationship to spirit, relationship to your ancestors, your relationship to future uh, successors, um, kin, and also at the same time uh, be rooted in the world as a productive member of society um, and uh, a productive member of uh, the overall uh, ecosystem from which we all emerge and are sustained by, right? This Gaia, this concept of Mother Earth. Um, uh, and uh, Man and the Machine, Homo Mysticus, was most of my last work that we'll, we'll get into a little bit once we go through the sort of the background material, theology reconsidered, quantum metaphysics. We'll look at some of the more Gnostic readings that I've done um, that look at some of the ancient texts and what they're telling us, what's been encoded there in sacred geometry and whatnot about the basic nature and structure of the universe. We'll look at some quantum physics principles, uh, some relativity principles, uh, and some of the other basic math and equations um, that underpin um, physics and in turn are consistent with and aligned with some of the mystic and the Gnostic findings that uh, are revealed throughout my work. So, uh, so, you know, there's really two sources of input for most of the work and the material that we'll go through. One is very practical bent for my background in engineering, and my professional career, and my family, and my personal life. That is all very rooted in, in the real world. Uh, and then in parallel to that, there's also um, a relationship with the spirit, relationship with the, the lineage, my teacher, and my teacher's teacher, um, that... Uh, provides uh, a connection to um, what we will call uh, the direct realm of consciousness, uh, which uh, has a relationship to this real world, but also underpins it in a very real sense. And we'll get into that uh, in quite a bit of detail. So uh, that's the beginning. That's the introduction uh, to me and the material and some of these dialogues. Uh, I'll split some of this up if I can. My video production skills are limited, but I'm learning. Um, and uh, I'll post some of these full videos on uh, on YouTube on a link that I'll provide through TikTok. And uh, you can take a look there and provide feedback or uh, any uh, perspectives, anything that you want to learn more about or anything of, of interest relative to the, to, the, to the topics at hand. So uh, that being said, it is uh, Wednesday, September 5th, 8 in the morning Eastern Standard Time. Namaste. Everybody have a great one. All right. Speak soon.